Hello and welcome to Lost Love Chronicles. Today we bring a story. Well, just F it. Remember, bros before hosts. Let's get it on. Just about everyone you come across in this life has something that makes them special. For the privileged it is being born with money, athletic prowess, intelligence, or even good looks. Their special skills help drive their lives and give them an edge on their competition. For those less fortunate, their gifts often serve as a cautionary warning to others about the challenges of life. My friend Ralph has always had his own unique specialties that separate him from the normal humans, those being mayhem and destruction. He's the human embodiment of the Wreck-It Ralph. If there is a way to take something sweet and wholesome and turn it into a catastrophic shitshow, then Ralph has probably done it and has the scars to prove it. He's a human wrecking ball and not in the Miley Cyrus weird way, but in the I can't believe he's still alive and not locked up way. He inevitably got nicknamed Wrecker Ralph and oftentimes the demolition man for causing havoc by taking things far beyond socially acceptable activities. If there was a way to completely obliterate something, Ralph had figured it out and tried it. Yup, just a great guy to have along as long as you're on his good side. I married Jenna Phoenix three years out of college. She was amazingly hot with a great ass, so it was completely understandable why I had my head so far up it that I didn't realize her bullshit. I knew when I married her that she wasn't exactly the warm and caring type, but she made up for it in the two most important ways to a superficial dickhead like me. She looked like a porn star and more importantly, she could fuck like one too. It is a scientific fact that a man can overlook resting bitch face and shitty attitude as long as she makes his dick hard enough to drain the blood away from his brain to keep him from thinking straight. I would say that you'd be surprised at how often that happens to guys, but we all know that you'd not be surprised. We think with our dicks until we learn through pain and experience to think with either our heart or our head. The heart makes great romance, the head makes a great marriage, and a hard dick makes for a great fee for your attorney. During our courtship, Jenna and Ralph had met exactly once while Ralph was home on leave. She'd met some of my other friends and got along with them relatively well. They were normal human beings and not really too outrageous, comparatively speaking. I tried to warn her about Ralph, but I knew she didn't really get it. It was a case of her smiling and laughing at stories of the things he had done without really understanding that they were actual true with little embellishment. Stories are really funny when those things are happening to other people but they take on a whole new meaning when you were caught up in the middle of them. It became a whole lot less funny when you have people associating you with a human man-child who is being talked to by the police about why about why he can't put mouse traps up all over Chuck E. Cheese while yelling that he is going to kill the giant rat once and for all. Or why you can't suddenly start running a checkout counter at Walmart if you don't actually work there. Most of his activities were stupid and harmless. Others went a little too far. Luckily, our hometown is like many others so he beat the charges often. It is amazing what you can get away with when half of your cousins are on the police force, your uncle is the sheriff and his wife, who also happens to be Ralph's godmother, is the judge. Even with the family connections keeping him safe, they had warned him that his stunts were going too far and that he needed to cut it out. When he finally crossed the line, any judge told him that he could either join the army or he could do a year in county. Blast fishing in the reservoir while they were trying to restock it for the fishing derby really pissed her off since it was one of Annie Judge and Uncle Sheriff's favorite annual date activities. You can mess with other people all you want. Don't mess with Annie Judge's time with her honey. So, off Ralph went to honorably serve his country. With Ralph in the army, he was gone most of the time from town, so his interactions with me, and by extension, Jenna, were minimal. He and I would email and video chat. I'd send him random care packages filled with stuff depending on where he was in the world. Despite being an idiot, Ralph had decent grades in school, and with the family connections keeping most of his activities out of his criminal record, he was able to enlist as an explosive ordnance disposal technician. Because when someone probably has mental issues, you want them disarming explosives. Ralph was able to hide his nefarious ways throughout basic training, since it was just a collection of random people and the drill sergeants were too busy trying to meet their required training events with the morons of the platoon. He even managed to make it halfway through AID before he got caught fucking around on an explosive range by building a C-4 dildo the day the command sergeant major was visiting the range. He may have even got away with it if he hadn't been bragging about modeling it after himself as his instructors and the command sergeant major stared in awe. It was at this point that Ralph's instructors finally realized that Ralph's personality wasn't a great fit for EOD, but they thought they had an idea of where his personality would fit right in. Combat engineers. You see, while EOD techs have to be mature and serious when disposing of bombs, 
combat engineers have about 80% of the intelligence with about 70% recklessness thrown in for fun. Ralph knew he had found his purpose in the Army when explaining to his AIT instructors what he did to get kicked out of EOD school when they explained to him how he failed to build parts of a female anatomy to put a C4 phallus into so he could brag about destroying it. And when he was instructed to add more explosives to his concrete charges the next day on the range, because as the good sergeant said to him, blow all of that shit up because it's a pain in the ass to turn back in, Ralph knew he'd found a home. Ralph would email me with his stories about the fun he was having. His hijinks and activities that got him a pair of Article 15s for doing dumb stuff, but not nearly enough to get him the boot out of the army. He had a great time, but after his four years were up, he decided to come back home. While he was off defending our freedoms, I had been busy getting married to my walking wet dream. Jenna and I started out with a typical marriage. We had wanted to get settled for a bit in our careers before having kids. It is a lot easier to travel the globe when you don't have to worry about sitters and bringing enough diapers. Things were good between Jenna and me, and then they suddenly weren't. She started to act differently, not drastically at first, but noticeable towards the end. This went on for weeks. I tried to talk to her about the issues I saw within our marriage, but of course she said nothing was wrong and that we were fine as she went about her new normal activities. That lasted until eventually I came home from work one day to her wedding ring on the kitchen table. My attempts at talking to her lead nowhere but the standard typical bullshit, it isn't you it's me. I'm going through some stuff, all the bullshit excuses because she probably said it. I was finally served the afternoon we were having Ralph's welcome home party. Just the standard irreconcilable differences listed as the reason and what seemed like an even split. I left the papers on the table as I headed out to the party so I could welcome my friend home. My marriage had died and I still didn't understand why. I'd missed having Ralph around and his return meant more to me than I was probably willing to admit to anyone. My marriage had gone to shit, and I hadn't figured out why, exactly. I strongly suspected foul play on her part, but I tried to put it out of my mind for the night. I gave Ralph a big hug when I saw him come in and his response was immediate. What the fuck is wrong with you? It's nothing. Don't worry about it. We're here to celebrate you coming home, I said as I handed him a drink. Glad to have you home, buddy. He gave me a questioning look. Yeah, right? Then he got a grin. You're right. It is good to be home. We had a few shots that night. By a few, I mean we drank the bar dry, and then they needed to go to the liquor store around the corner for more. They finally kicked us out and Ralph, and I made our way to the local fine dining option that is open in the middle of the night. All grease, no taste, perfect. With the noise of the party died down to the quiet of the diner, Ralph asked. What happened? I don't know. Everything was fine, then things got weird, and then she left. I got the divorce papers a few hours before your party. I still don't know what happened. As he always did, he got straight to the point. So who is she fucking? I don't know. After thinking for all of about four seconds, Ralph declared, Okay, so here's the plan. We fuck up her life. And then we find out who he is, and we fuck up his life too. For the first time in a while, I actually smiled. Is it that simple? Of course it is. She's gone. You can't go back to the cunt anymore after what she did. So why bother crying about it like a little bitch? Even if she walked back into your life, would ever trust her again? Fuck no. He wasn't wrong about any of it. She was gone. It was time to burn that bridge and move on. He got the stupid grin on his face that I'd seen a hundred times before. I'm on terminal leave for the next month, so I have plenty of time to help with this. You take care of the lawyer. I'll take care of the rest. I laughed. What the fuck are you going to do? Don't worry about this, bro. I got this. We finished eating our grease and called for a ride back to my house and finally went to bed. By the time I woke up the next day it was about 11 in the morning and I could hear noises outside like people were talking in the driveway. As I looked out the window, I saw the driveway full of my stuff that had been inside the house before I'd gone to bed and people rummaging through it. Walking up to Ralph, I took a sip of my coffee as I asked Ralph what he was doing, though the hand-drawn sign declaring the cheating slut sale gave me a pretty decent clue what he was doing. What does it look like I'm doing? I'm making you some money. Um, thank you. But how do you know what is Jenna's stuff and which is mine? That's easy. If it's female crap, then I'm selling it because it is probably hers. And if looks classy, I'm also selling it because it probably isn't yours since you clearly have shitty taste. Especially in women. I nodded my head. Fair points. There was no point in stopping him. I felt a little bad about some of the things getting sold since some of them were family trinkets that Jenna had loved but at this point I didn't care as Ralph handed me some printed papers. She really is a dumb bitch. 
She probably should have logged out of her Gmail on your house computer before she left, but thankfully she didn't. She's been fucking some dude named Tim who she works with. They've been fucking for a bit and sharing photos with each other. Really, you should have known better than to marry a chick with a tramp stamp of a butterfly above her ass. I looked over what he'd given me, astonished at how easily he'd found out about her cheating. I let out a trite. I never knew slip out. No shit, dickhead, because you trusted the cunt. But that's done now, time to move on. I shrugged my shoulders and haggled with a lady on the price of Jenna's wedding dress. The nice woman was very excited when I counteroffered from her original suggestion of $500 to $20. It was dumb to give away the comment, but I looked forward to someday sharing with her that it sold for $20 as a nice fuck you. While the sale was going strong, I sent a text to a friend who sells his soul daily as a family practice attorney. He shot one back telling me to come over to his office so he could review the offer and sign some documents. I got back in the middle of the afternoon and just about everything was gone. The house looked almost empty inside except for the basic requirements of what a guy needs to survive. Ralph was just finishing packing up a large box that was labeled Jenna's stuff on the sides. Ralph smiled at me. How'd it go with the lawyer? Fine. No issues. The agreement is fair, so I've signed it. I won't do any better with the courts. When did your sale end? About an hour ago. I had to run out to get some supplies, but I'm done now. This is all that is left of her stuff. He then handed me an envelope. That's her cut of the sale. Her cut came to $214.65. Make sure she gets her half. We should probably drop off her stuff at her parents' house so she doesn't have a reason to come back here. That makes sense. Let's drop off her stuff, then go grab something to eat. Knowing that her wedding dress alone had cost the amount of a cheap car, I knew that Ralph probably hadn't gotten the best deal possible, but I was just glad to have it out of the house so I could start my new life. I tried to pick up the box, but Ralph grabbed it first and said he had it, and that I should drive since I knew where Jenna's parents lived. When we arrived at Jenna's parents' house, her father Simon answered the door, and then let us in when we told him that we were here to drop off her stuff. Simon tried to apologize for her actions, but I just cut him off. Did you know she was cheating on me? He couldn't look me in the eye as he shook his head yes. Thanks for that, Simon. Great daughter you raised. Ralph put the box on the table and I caught myself as I did a double take as I got a glimpse of the box's contents. I was fairly sure that the humongous dildo with correspondingly huge hairy nuts, as well as the big black cock porn were recent additions that hadn't previously resided in my home. There was a red fire extinguisher as well. I did my best to stifle a laugh and instead just told my soon-to-be ex-father-in-law to tell his daughter that I'd signed the papers and that my lawyer would be talking to her attorney. I was barely keeping it together. The ridiculous size of the dildo had me almost laughing, so I pretended to shake my head in disgust as we walked out as he tried to stammer an apology. Once we were back in my truck, I couldn't help but burst out laughing. How big is that dildo, and what else did you put in there? It's 12 inches long, 6 inches wide, and I don't know how big the hairy balls are. They were a nice touch though, he said with a shit-eating grin. We had a good time at dinner as he regaled me with his exploits over the last few years. I'd heard some of them from him in conversations before, but to hear them come out of his mouth it just made it twice as funny. It is almost impossible to be in a bad mood when Ralph is around. That Jenna had made my life suck so much before she left just made it easier to start moving on. Jenna and I were those rare people who still had a home phone since it was cheaper to bundle with the internet provider. I checked it when we got back and was able to enjoy a blistering message left by Jenna. Her ranting and raving was barely understandable as she screamed for about two minutes straight about cell phone, huge dildo, hairy balls, father thinks I'm pregnant, and big black dicks. I checked my phone and there were no messages from Jenna, but looking up from my phone to Ralph's smile I checked it again and realized that Jenna's contact had been blocked on my cell. I looked at Ralph, you were a busy boy today. I understand most of that rant, surprisingly, but not the pregnant part. Ralph grabbed a pair of beers out of the fridge and handed me one. Taking a sip of his, sorry, the best I could do with that limited amount of time was draw some lines with a marker. It was a roll of the dice with the pregnancy test as Jenna or her mother would likely have spotted the fake right off the bat, but I was hoping that her father would see it first and not notice the difference. It was a shot in the dark, but it seems to have worked out. Ralph settled into the guest room, and we became roommates as he adjusted to civilian life and me to single life. With the divorce in process, Jenna no longer felt the need to hide her new boy toy. Tim was some asshole from her work. I'd met him once or twice at her work functions but didn't really know him. 
A little while later I came across a flyer as I went to grab a coffee downtown. I picked it up off the corkboard and put it into my pocket to take home. Walking in the door that evening, I handed Ralph back what was obviously his handiwork. Cute. He smiled at his work. I have no idea what you're talking about, he said as he looked over the flyer. It showed Jenna and New Love Tim in a compromising position. All of the naughty parts had been covered over, but it was clear what they were doing. That it had both of their names, and said that he was not her husband when it happened, that made it made much more damaging. The distribution was centered around the office and expanded out from there. I asked how many he had put out and Ralph replied, A few. Thousand. How'd you find the time to put them all? Easy. I found a bunch of teenagers hanging out and gave them $20 each to put them up everywhere. Even if some ended up in the trash, they still got to cause trouble and isn't that what being a teenager is all about? As I hit play on the house phone messaging service, Jenna's ranting came across, everywhere, mall, work, thinks I'm a slut. It was pretty easy to follow her tirade this time, more so because I just didn't care anymore but when she said, homeless guy with a sign, I gave Ralph a questioning look. Ralph handed me a beer, then showed me a video on his phone of a guy who looked homeless twirling a sign that said, a cheating slut lives here. Ralph took a sip of his beer. One isn't homeless. He's a new friend of mine from the VFW and his wife left him while he was in Afghanistan. He was pretty happy to embarrass a cheating slut, even if it wasn't his own. I sipped my beer as we watched the video of one spinning his sign with gleeful enthusiasm. The divorce continued to progress through the system. Jenna's attorney contacted mine about stopping the harassment. My lawyer said that I had no idea what she was talking about and that if Jenna was going to slander me then we'd change the reasons for the divorce to adultery. I would have changed the reason from irreconcilable differences already, but I just wanted it over and I wouldn't have gotten better terms. But the threat worked and she backed off. The next raving message days later went something along the lines of, fucking cowbell, assholes, Game of Thrones, High Sparrow, shame. Part of the fun had become trying to figure out what he'd done based off her histrionics. This time it seemed pretty evident. As usual, Ralph handed me a beer and then started the video. So Juan's girlfriend Maria heard about what was going on from Juan. Maria's ex-husband had left her while she was pregnant and she is still really pissed about it, so she asked for a way to help out as a form of therapy for herself. The video was fantastic. Maria's loud voice filled the room as she rang her bell. Juan in his homeless garb looked like Ricardo Montalban playing the high sparrow, looked unjudgingly. Jenna looked ashamed. Tim looked like he wanted to be anywhere but there. I took a sip. Where did this happen? Ralph laughed, fucking red lobster. Taking another taste, I asked, so no one got naked? Slamming his hand down on the table, Ralph said, shit, I knew I forgot something. I guess we'll have to go to see some naked titties to make up for it. Your logic is impeccably sound, my friend. Let's go. I said as I grabbed my keys and we headed out to the local gentleman's club to remove that stain on Ralph's honor from his nudity mistake. As we watched the boobs dance, I asked him when it would end. When the divorce is final, I'll let it go then. Until then, fuck her. The gorgeous dancer with the shockingly original name of Ebony then smiled at Ralph as we placed our cash in her thang. While some people have declared that there is no sex in the champagne room, Ralph swears that there is. Or at least it was starting that way until the two extremely large bouncers were clear that Ralph was not allowed back in the club for a month after what he and Ebony were caught doing. Ralph's response as we left the club was heartfelt. I think I'm in love. I don't know how he got into her car, but the raving of fucking mothballs confused the crap out of me. I racked my brain until I had to finally give up. With a triumphant deceitful smile, he declared, did you know that red bell peppers end up smelling like mothballs if they sit long enough? The internet is an amazing place. I agree, my friend, I said as I finished off my beer. You seem to have let Tim off rather lightly so far, not doubting your brilliance just stating an observation. Maybe I have, but he's had to change his cell phone three times this month. It seems that he's the most eligible man on Grinder, Scruff, Jacked, Hornet, and FarmersOnly.com. Farmers only? Don't discriminate. Gay farmers need love too. Handing him another beer, I said, that they do my friend. May they find the love that they seek among the wheat. That was followed a week later by a visit from Ralph's uncle the sheriff to the house. I'd always got along great with his family, so I invited him into the house and grabbed him a beer. Taking his first sip, the sheriff asked, Where is my idiot nephew today? He took off with his new girlfriend to Mexico for the week last Friday. Interesting. So he isn't local? No, sir. He's been gone for days. What's up? Just then the phone started ringing. The sheriff turned to me. 
You going to get that? Nope, just saving the evidence of my lunatic ex's mental instability, I said as I took a taste, and the ranting show of a message began. Fucking lawn, work, brown grass, cheating whore. Taking another swallow, I'm guessing my wife's work has some issues with their grass? The sheriff said, it does seem so. They swore that it was Ralph, but it seems like he has a good alibi. Why don't you call him, and we can confirm where he is and get this settled now? I gave Ralph a ring, and a recognizable voice picked up his phone. Hi, Ralph's busy right now, can I help you? The moans that followed of, oh, baby, right there. So good gave a good indication of what Ralph was up to at the moment. The sheriff took it in stride. Where is Ralph right now, honey? Oh shit, he's inside of me right now. I couldn't help but spew my beer across the room. The sheriff couldn't help himself either. Laughing, he asked. Honey, I mean are you two in Mexico or here in town? Ralph had taken the phone from her though we could still hear the sound of skin-on-skin -skin contact. We're in Cancun, Uncle Sly, just enjoying the local sights. I'll email you my flight itinerary in a little bit. I'm sure whatever it was, probably a bunch of punk teenagers. I've got to let you go. I'm kind of busy right now. Bye. The sheriff handed me back my phone, finished his beer, and walked out, laughing to himself as he mumbled, in me. The end date of the divorce had arrived. I was a free man. And more importantly for Jenna, this was the end of Ralph's games. It was a lovely Sunday, and we were just getting ready to enjoy the first game of the afternoon. As I sat down on the couch, I handed Ralph a beer. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you helping out. It's time for everyone to move on. Not quiet yet. One more to go. We've got to end on a high note. Can you end with something better than you've already done? Putting his hand against his heart as if offended by the notion, my good sir, you wound me with your lack of faith. That didn't scare me. It was the evil grin that sent a shiver down my spine. How bad is this going to be? Looking at his watch, you'll see just about. It was amazing. Just like a movie. At that second, the phone rang. Now, some parts of the screaming were clear, you fucking assholes. Others were just bits of words like church, grandmother, midget, Elvis, strap-on, threesome, whole congregation. I looked at Ralph. What the fuck did you do? He just smiled. Wanna watch? He said as he opened up a video on his iPad. Inside was clearly the church that Jenna and I had been married in, so I recognized it quickly. The minister was preaching when suddenly a man came forward. The minister was clearly confused for a moment, but the man said he needed to confess his sins and stood on the altar and began to declare that he had sinned in the eyes of the Lord and wanted to atone for his wicked ways. He'd been fornicating with a woman in the congregation named Jenna and that he wanted to repent his sins. So I'm trying to wrap my head around this as I watch a four feet tall dwarf dressed as Elvis declare he's been fucking my now ex-wife. And then it got weirder. Watching the video in awe, as Elvis walks over to Jenna, grabs her hand and suddenly starts talking about how much he loved it when Jenna used the strap on him and pegged him while Love Me Tinder played while he sucked on Tim's dick. But he knew it was wrong because she was still married. He loved what she and Tim did to his hiney with it, and only she knows how to make him feel like a real man. While he didn't love it when Tim made him dress as Tinkerbell, he'd do anything for Jenna's love. But now that her divorce was final, they could finally be together. Then he got down on his little knee and proposed to her. The ring looked huge in his little hands. Be my full-size Priscilla, Jenna. I love you. Jenna was in shock. Her grandma passed out. Her dad stood up and puked. Tim ran for the door. Her mom was crying. Complete pandemonium. I was stunned. I had no idea what to say as I stared at him. He just sat back and grinned. A minute later the front door opened and someone walked into kitchen and I heard the fridge open up. A few seconds later, there was a four-foot Elvis impersonator sitting next to me on the couch watching the game. He cracked open a beer, looked at me, gave me a wink, and said, Hail to the king, baby. As far as my own revenge, I chose to be much more civilized in my retribution. I've been dating Jin's former best friend Kara for the last year. Jenna had actually done a good job of hiding it from her friends. Kara's ex-husband had got caught banging some barfly 30 years his senior a few years back so Jenna had known that she couldn't share her secret with Kara. There is something very satisfying about hearing your ex cry when your girlfriend says that she can't go out because she is spending the night at her boyfriend's house. She would probably be even more pissed if she knew that Kara's new best friend Ebony was going to be there with her boyfriend Ralph. Ebony invited Kara out to Ebony's day job as a Foxy Fitness instructor and I compliment Ebony at every opportunity on her fantastic instruction after Kara showed me what she learned in class that day. Ralph intends to propose to Ebony later tonight when they get back to her place, 
just as I will be proposing to Kara tonight as well. I fully intend to have a wedding invitation hand-delivered to Jenna, and Ralph just happens to know the perfect dwarf to hand-deliver it to her. Until next time. Dear listener, if you have reached this far please click on the subscribe button. It will be a great help.